All right, today's lecture, we will look at networking. And if you're talking about Linux, you're probably going to have it running on a network. And it's going to be really important to be able to understand how to get your network up and running. And how to check who's on the system and things of that nature. So if you recall, if here I'm going to run command and windows and I've opened a little uh, shell here and how do I determine what the IP address is I type IP config I hit enter and we see this is my IP address dot one dot one 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 a private class C address okay what's this what's the command for Linux the command is if config not IP but IF so you see that this is on a class C private address we're using network address translation here which you should already know from your associates degree uh, two two six dot one two nine let's go over here I've got mint 11 running I type IF config dot two two six dot one two eight so can these connect to each other? You should already know how to do this. 192.168.226 since they're on the same subnet and 129. Okay, so they can see each other. So we know the two systems can see each other. So how do we log in from one system to another? Well, there's various protocols you can use. And the one that's standard is an encrypted protocol called SSH for secure shell and secure shell will use high-grade uh, industrial strength government bona fide uh, encryption it actually uses public private key encryption which uh, if you did get your AA or uh, your AS here you will know what that is and so what it does is it scrambles not only the content that's going from one computer to the next but also it's encrypting the login information which would be your credentials your username and your password there's other applications that you can use to connect from one computer to another such as telnet or FTP but neither of those are secure neither use encryption so you should never use them if you need to connect to another system in Linux uh, the best way to do it is through SSH but in order to log in to another computer yes using SSH the computer that you're logging into, and let's say we're going from Mint 11 to Mint 13, um, has to be running a server, has to be running the SSH server, just like if we were trying to connect here to the over FTP, it had to be running an FTP server. So we need to install open SSH, oops, install open SSH server so you should do this do you want to continue it says what it's going to install yes now it just so happens that SSH runs over port 22 notice that they're talking about keys down here SSH 2 RSA DSA and EC DSA um, these are are uh, public private key pairs that are used for encryption and so if we want to see whether our SSH server is listening now we can go and, and run this command hit enter and we search for port 22 we see port 22 is listening so our SSH server is running Notice that it has quite a few um, demons in here that are listening. Okay, the, the IP address of the other computer changed, so I have to go back and type yes here. Okay, now it's asking me for my password, and, and my username and password will be encrypted. Notice that it's logging in as PC at this IP address, and we type in the password. 
And notice that I'm on Mint 13 now. That I've actually logged in to another computer. Isn't that cool? We can skip back over here. And if we want to know who's who's on the system, that's a, that's an, uh, a command that we might want to know as, as administrators, is who is logged into our system? Well, the command to find that out is, is who. And so, as it turns out, there are two people logged in, or actually it's the same user from different locations. So PC is logged in from TTY8, and essentially what this is saying, the TTY8 and this this information right here is saying is I'm logged in from the main console on my Mint 13. So I'm sitting at a physical machine. This is when I, the date and time I logged in, which is correct because I've had this running for a while. And now you see PC is logged in at PTS slash one. What is that? Well, if this is the main console right here, PTS stands for, for pseudo terminal service. And it's the first one, and it shows you the date and time I logged in and the IP address from which I logged in. Isn't that cool? So um, so that's a good command to know. Also, if you type W, that gives you a little more information. Uh, the number of users, uh, the load average the last time, login from, login date and time. And what you're running right here, the X session bash, uh, manager. Remember we talked about X, uh, the window manager, and we're running a bash shell from this IP address. And that's our min 11. Cool. Okay, so um, tell you what, let's let's add let's add some users. So we'll log in. Uh, we'll log in from. Um, Mint 11, again, is other users, right? So how do you add a new user? Um, notice if we type users here, this is what currently is I'm um, PC in the group PC. And the command to add a user is called add user. That's very simple. So sudo add user, and then we have to provide a login name. And so I'm going to provide it JPC. Let's see if I can make this a little bigger so you can see it. Uh, I guess not. Tell you what, let me clear this. Move this around a little bit. So you can see everything. Okay, sudo add user JPC. And now it's going to walk us through the process of adding a new user. So it's adding user JPC. It's adding a new group, JPC. Notice that here is the group number. Remember that users and groups are identified in uh, by the system by their uh, number, not necessarily their, their username. It's also creating a home directory, home JPC. We'll see that in a second. It's also copying some files from Etsy scale, which means skeleton. So what the add user program does is add some basic files and directory and directories that are defaults and so it gives you something to work with so we enter our password and then it asks us for the full information in a second we'll see where that stuff goes uh, I'm just gonna make some stuff up here okay and if you didn't want to add anything just hit enter is this information correct? The default is yes. Cool. Okay, so we've added the user. So where does this information reside? Well, as it turns out, remember all the configuration files are in Etsy. There's a couple of different uh, places where you'll find this information. The first is, is in something called the password file. And notice here the password file contains information about the username. Notice this X here. I'll explain that in a second. Root is user ID 0 and group ID 0, so 0 rules. And then you see um, a group name. You see the person's or the, uh, the default 
directory, notice that root has their own directory under the root directory. So this is this is not the root directory, this is root's directory, and then the shell that the person uses. Some of these are system files. Notice here bin, uh, games, and so on. If we go to the end, we see the actual users. <clears throat> so PC is user ID 1000, group ID 1000, that's my real name. Uh, there's some missing information in here because I didn't include. Here's my home directory, and there's the shell I use when I log in. Here's JPC. Notice that, that the users start at 1000 going up. Everything below that is, is, is a system number. 1001, 1001, there's my name, there's my office number, my one of my phone numbers, and my home folder or home directory, and the shell I used. Notice that when I created the uh, when I installed OpenSSH server, it created a user called SSHD. Its ID is 117. Its group ID is 65534. The default directory is var run SSHD and no login. What this means is, is that SSHD is not allowed to log into the computer. Why? Because it shouldn't be, because it's a daemon. Okay, so where are the passwords? This says that's a password file. Well, it's not really a password file. Uh, for security purposes, there's a file called the shadow file. And the shadow file contains digital fingerprints of the passwords. So notice that this is not a password, but it's a digital fingerprint of the password. So root can log in and there's the hash of the password. It's called the one-way cryptographic hash. Notice that a lot of these have an asterisk in here. That means that they're not allowed to log in. And they shouldn't because they're their services running on this computer. If we go down we'll see that the only three human users are allowed to log in. Here's PC with my digital fingerprint and JPC with a digital fingerprint. Okay, why did I show that? Well, just to show you how over here, let's open another terminal. We'll open a tab. And now I want to notice that I'm logged in as PC here on min 11. What if I wanted to log in as JPC at 192.168. Um, 226.130? Can I do that? Well, think about it. Uh, you may be the network administrator on one computer or 10 computers or 100. You may not have the same login information on all the computers. So there needs to be some way to stipulate what username you would like to use on that system. Here's the way you do it. JPC at 192.168.226.130. If I wanted to log in as PC, I could do either... I could either indicate that here just saying PC at or because I'm logged in as PC here just leave that off. Let's see if we can log in. Okay, ask me for my password and I'm logged in. Well, wait a second, I'm logged in as JPC and as PC. Sure, you can do that on the same system. Now let's go back over here. Let's run clear and go back the home directory and let's run who? Ah, look at this. We've added a user here, JPC. This is the pseudo terminal for that he or she is running and the time they logged in and the IP address. Okay, and because you're logged in <clears throat> uh, using the you know, you're using your bash shell, any command that you want to run from here, you can do that. So I'm logged in as JPC. Um, tell you what, let me try to run um, just some command as sudo. I'm going to add, I'm going to add a user here. Now I'm running as JPC. Now remember, sudo, sudo, <coughs> 
uh, is used to run a command as root in lieu of logging in as root. Now, everybody doesn't get root privileges any more than everybody on a Windows box gets administrator privileges. So, let's see if JPC has root privileges. Uh-oh. JPC is not in the sudoers file. This incident will be reported. Well, as it turns out, you have to be in this file called sudoers. Let's see if I can read this. Won't even let me read that. Won't even let me read the sudoers file. Because I'm not root. Or I'm I'm not in the sudoers file, which is for anybody who's capable is running as root. But let me go back over here and uh, notice I'm I'm running this from Mint 11, but I'm logged in as PC. Remember I'm PC over here, and you saw me install SS Open SSH server over here. Uh, I think I can add a user. Add user. Oops, spell this right. Hello. I sure can. And do you think I can look at the password file? Well, actually, I could with with under PC or JPC because uh, that's allowed. So let's look at password. Let's go to the bottom, and there's hello. So I've created a user login. Hello. Okay, if I'm 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 on Mint 11, but I'm logged into Mint 13. If I want to go bye bye, I type exit. Notice how the prompt changed. PC at Mint 11. So I'm back on Mint 11. Let's go up here and let's type uh, who and wait, who, who did I log in? Oh shoot. Okay, I logged out. PC is Mint 11. Let's go back up here and log out. There we go. So now I've logged in out as both. We type who and who's on the system? Just me sitting at the physical console. Okay, so that showed you a few important skills that you need to know about how to log in another and log into another server, how to install the necessary software, what SSH is. That's all high grade encryption. You should always use that. Don't use FTP or Telnet. There's a way to secure use SSH to copy files from one computer to another, and that's all encrypted too, so they don't grab your username and password. But why is it important that they don't grab your username and password? Well, I'll tell you why, because odds are 80% of you who are using your username and password on one system are using it for other systems. Well, it's it's not important on this system, yeah, but if they get that, and I, sh I show you in other classes how to grab that stuff going across the network. But if they grab your username and password here, they're going to try that on your Gmail system, your Yahoo system, your Bank of America, all the other systems to try to see if they can break in. And if it doesn't work for one person, it's going to work for somebody else. So they'll grab all everybody's usernames and passwords and try to log in. And, and they will be, uh, even though it may be 1% or 5%, odds are they're going to be able to break into somebody's system. And that's why it's important to use encryption both for networking and on our hard disks for proprietary important information so that users who are not authorized can't view that information.